flip it this morning in your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, chapter number 25, verse number 16. <clears throat> I'm going to look a little differently uh, at my message this morning. Most of the time I'm gaining ideas from one passage of Scripture, but I'm going to use this verse as my um, foundation, and then we're going to be looking at some other supporting Scriptures for this this morning. Um, Solomon and all his wisdom gave us this thought, and I think there's an abundance of information here. Uh, Proverbs 25, verse number 16. The Word of God says, Have you found honey? Have you found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for you, lest you be filled therewith and vomit it. Amen. I know that's not the most pleasant thought this morning to end of that. And uh, we're not going to really deal with that part uh, as much as we are going to deal with the part where the Word of God says, have you found honey? Now, I, I think that it, it's, it's, it's okay to say that probably every Christian goes through a funk. You know, you go through a funk. If you look up the, the word, what is funk, it, it, it really is a state of depression. And you know, uh, uh, all Christians fall into a funk at times. And, and I think that's only you then that, 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 that we visit the state of funk at times. I think every one of us in here, we want to be honest with ourselves. We want to be honest with God. We want to be honest with others. We've all fell into that state of just being in this funk. And uh, when, we, when we get there, I, I think it's important to know that, that we visit, we do not reside there. We visit, but we don't reside there. And, uh, you know, we, we, can, we can go at times to the Molly Grubs, and, and all of us can appreciate the Molly Grubs and misery. And, and, and unfortunately, how many's found that misery likes company? Any of you ever notice that? You get someone on a, on a roll of complaining, on a roll of being in a bad mood, and they just want to fish everybody. They want to reel them right into where they are because misery likes company. And so uh, everybody likes when someone is sympathetic to our problems and our struggles, and we try to draw them in and give them an ear. But, but I need to tell you this morning that we as believers inside Christianity, Amen. We are not meant to live in depression and oppression and repression. We're not to live in a place that shrivels up our soul. We're not to live in a place where, uh, where others uh, look upon us and they think, wow, that's not for me. That's too painful. You know, uh, can any brightness penetrate through to them? And so Solomon writes in, in, in verse number, uh, chapter number 25, he writes about uh, that, that, that with people and even kingdom people, if you would this morning, people who's bound for the kingdom of God. We are the kingdom of God. So even as kingdom people, you know, there, there can be unfortunately a dross in the silver. There can be that of a false witness and unfaithful men and brawling women and boasters and enemies and backbiters. Uh, you can find all that talking. Proverbs chapter number 25 where it talks about have you found any honey? Uh, are, 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 are there any, is there any honey? And they eat so much that it's sufficient. He talks about all these people that are there and, and, and I need to tell you sometimes people look at the church and all these bad characteristics that's what they say the church is. Because there can be those type of people in the church. Now, I don't believe that we, we, are, uh, we are infiltrated with those problems, but we have to be on the car. We have to watch that we don't have those type of problems. And so here it is that, 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 that uh, these things, you know, false witnesses, unfaithful men, brawling women, uh, boasters, enemies, backbiters, uh, they, they don't have any joy, they don't have one shred of happiness, and, and they can make it not look so appealing to the world and to other Christians. And so right in the middle of this, Solomon said, have you found any honey? You see, the fact of it is, is that in the middle of life, there's going to be positives and there's going to be negatives. 
And that God sows good seed in us through His Word. And if we're not careful, the enemy will come through and he'll sow in all types of, of weeds that will choke out the good things that God has planted. But I want you to think about this. When we are in these difficult times in our lives, that there is always a river that is flowing that is full of honey. And we need to find that place and we need to drink it in. Amen. Unlike some people's view of living for God, I want you to know living for God does not deny any of us great pleasures that are in life. Amen. If you encounter any happiness, if you encounter any honey, if you encounter any joy, if you can cover any sweetness, amen, in the kingdom, amen, uh, partake of it, enjoy it, eat till you're satisfied. Once again, there is a balance. I, I wish one thing, amen, I wish one thing with our children, Sister Tiffany, that at one year of age, we would have never introduced them to sweets. They never ate sweets to one year of age. And would you believe that it is a battle now to get them to eat good food? All they want is sweets and carbs and junk. Any of you families ever go through that? Am I, okay, good, good, good. Okay, I'm glad I'm not alone. But there is a balance of life. Amen. There's going to be the bitter. There's going to be the difficult. But there is going to be the sweet. And, and so here it is. Solomon said, if you find any honey, eat it. But don't eat it all up. It'll make you so sick you'll vomit if that's all you partake of. And so I want to tell you that in this Christian life, amen, there is honey and there is sweetness and God wants us to partake of the sweetness. Let me ask you, what are you looking for in the kingdom of God? Do you view the kingdom of God as a land of beauty and a land of promise or do you view it as a wasteland? Some people think that being a Christian, that it's all wasteland. I hate to tell that person, but that is not the true picture of what it's like to serve and love God. It is a land of beauty, and it's a land of promise, and it's a land, yes, there will be difficulties, but there's a land full of honey for you and I that we can partake of until we are satisfied. Amen. I want to ask you that this morning. In your walk with Christ, I know that we go through the funk. I understand that. We have our moments. But are you living there? Is that your residence? I mean, how do you feel about serving God? Maybe you've got it so sugar-coated that you think it's all pie in the sky. Amen. Uh, but, but Job said this. I preached on it last week. Job said, a God gives good and God gives the bad. If I can rejoice in the good, can I also rejoice in the bad? It's equally given by God. So it's learning that life is mixed up of all these ingredients, but we've got to find the honey, and we've got to partake of it. We've got to eat of it. Here it was, the children of Israel, they had left Egypt. And as they're leaving Egypt, they knew that they were bound for the promised land. Moses was leading them. And God had promised them a land that was flowing with, with milk and with honey. And, 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 and here it is. God delivers them. And all they do is murmur about the water. They murmur about the manna. They murmur about the, the, the conditions that they are in. And uh, uh, they don't like the rules. They don't like the regulations. Next thing they're dancing around a golden calf. I mean, here are these people that, that, that cannot find the honey in the deliverance of God. Brother Josh had been in captivity for over 400 years. They were working as slaves and God miraculously delivers them. And in the middle of the journey, somehow they have this misconception of what God's doing in their life. And all they do is murmur and complain. Sister Rachel, when God is raining down manna and blessing and leading them and helping them, cannot we be the same way in our life? We think because we serve God, amen, that it should be one particular way. And all of a sudden, when it's not, we begin to complain and we forget about the honey that God gives us every day in our life. Amen. God gives honey. And so here they finally arrive on the threshold of the promised land. And God sends in, or Moses sends in 12 spots. We know the story. What's the, what's the ratio of how many come out with a bad report? 10 to 2. Not a very good ratio, is it? Amen. So here it is. The two come out and they say, oh, we looked and it's magnificent, Brother Josh. It's amazing, Sister Rachel. Everything that's in this land. And yes, Sister Dot, there's, there's giants, but we can conquer them. And so, Sister Tina, they're, they're living on the honey of 
have everything that, that God has for them because God's promised this. And if God's promised this, uh, that they can take down all the fortified city. All the walls can be broken down. Uh, God can help us with this. But all of a sudden, now it comes ten men. And they say, wait a second. Everyone is bigger and taller than us. We're like grasshoppers. They didn't even see the honey in the land. All they see is these terrible conditions. So here it is all the hype for the Bobby went to. But Tim come out and throw a wet blanket over all the great hype, Sister Jenny. And so here it is, God says, okay. Since you're gonna be fearful, since you don't believe, uh, you don't think that you can conquer the land and encounter the sweetness, then you're gonna spend another 40 years wondering around. I wonder this this morning. Even if we have challenges set before us, there will be challenges in serving God. There are going to be big challenges at times. Do we look at the challenges and deny the God of victory and deny that there's sweetness there for us to eat? Or do we look and say, that is pretty big. But if God brought me to it, God will bring me through it. And God will give me honey in my journey. Amen. I believe that probably all of us here, we'd like to find some honey. Amen. You remember a young man, his name was Samson. And he's going down to Timnah. We're not going to talk about all the details of this story. But, 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 but he is found a young lady that he falls in love with. And, and, and so here he is. He, he's making his way down to her because he's making wedding plans. And so as he goes down there, uh, Sister Linda, he's making his way. He doesn't have any weapons with him, Sister Tiffany. He, he, he's just going down there. And so all of a sudden, Sister Tina, a lion jumps out in front of him. And so what are you going to do? Here's a lion. Here I am on my path. I'm going to make my plans. I'm going to make my journey. And so he goes in and he says, well, I, I don't have a weapon, so I'll just destroy the lion on my own. And that's exactly what he does. And Brother Craig, he doesn't go down to Tim and start going to the young girl. Oh, there was a terrible lion in the way, and I almost didn't make it. I almost was uh, killed. I had a terrible catastrophe. You don't find him mentioning anything about it. Everything is already made. And so he comes back by the same path wherewith he had killed the lion. And he notices that the lion isn't there the same way it was before. Only a little bit of uh, fur is left and, and the carcass of its body. And there within the body, he finds that there are some honeybees that have made a nest. And in the comb of that, they have put some honey. And he takes off the honey and he eats it and goes on his journey. Amen. I, I want to tell you something. Uh, here it is. He enjoyed the sweetness of the honey. You don't hear him put, uh, putting too much emphasis on uh, the, the terrible fight that he fought against the lion. All he really does is says, wow, I fought the lion. I defeated it. And now there's some honey and I'm enjoying it. Sometimes we put so much emphasis on the things we go through in life. The trials, the sicknesses, the heartache, the heartbreak, uh, the difficulties. All we do is murmur about that. Maybe we should just forget about it. And one day, amen, we, as we trust God and God gives us the victory, amen, one day we'll pass back by and there'll be some honey because of what God has done in our life. Amen. Do you believe God can do that? Yes. Sister Rachel, I'm not making light of you. I believe there's honey in Amen, I do. I believe there is honey for us as we face the challenges of life. And so uh, th there's, there's going to be adversaries that will roar and pounce on us out of nowhere. And, and, and right in the vineyard of the Lord, it's going to, it's going to test your strength and your faith and your determination. Amen. Uh, nothing in, in life is going to go untested, especially your walk with Christ. It is going to be tested so that it can be proven. But in the test, I believe. See, Samson was willing to fight and he was determined to survive the attack. And I believe God can take the carcasses of our enemies and put honey in them. <coughs> Do you hear me this morning? 
I believe God can take the carcasses of our enemies and put honey in them for us. We've got to trust God. Samson was not a superhero. He didn't strive from one victory to the next. It seemed like his life was full of a lot of, uh, 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 of just swinging from tragedy to triumph, tragedy to triumph. That's just his life swinging back and forth. It seems to be the pendulum. Because we find his situation there with the girl from Timna. We find that he finds himself in the lap of Delilah. And there he is. Uh, she is nagging him until he reveals his strength to her. And he finds that he is grinding in the prison house and he is blind. But even there, amen, God says, I will not let this tragedy go without there being a trial. And he calls out upon God. And they're grinding at the post. Amen. Spiritually speaking, he he finds some honey because he destroys more Philistines, amen, in his end of uh, uh, death than what he did in his whole life. Amen. God gave him honey. Can I tell you what? That what the enemy means for your evil and for your bad, amen, fight it, fight it. Amen. Stand, amen. Trust God to give you the victory knowing that there is honey in the carcass for you. Amen. We used to sing that old song, There's Honey in the Rock, My Brother. Amen. His whole birth, Samson's had been a miracle. And I'm sure his parents wanted more for him, but he lived his life foolishly and endangered the life that God had given him. But nonetheless, even though he was not perfect, God still provided for him honey in the place of some of his greatest challenges. I think that speaks to us. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. And if God provided for a man in all of his imperfections, God will provide for you and I and provide honey for us even in the midst of our difficulty. What did Solomon say? Have you found any honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for you. How many of you remember several Tuesday nights ago I talked about Saul I'll, I'll give you the story over again. King Saul was in a very bad situation. He was down to only 600 men, and the Philistines were fighting against them. There was only two swords left within the, the, the Israel's army. One was on Jonathan, and one was on Saul. You see, they didn't have the way to make them by the cray. They didn't even sharpen them. They were at the mercy of the Philistines, and they had nothing. And so here it is that Saul is discouraged. He's in funk. And he wants everybody else to be with him. All 600, Brother Dennis. Let's just bring them into the same funk with us. So all of a sudden, Brother Craig, his son says, while everybody else is resting and, and roasting marshmallows by the fire, he says to his armor bearer, it ain't going to be this way with us. Let's go. I'm getting out of this funk. He said, I, I, I'm not going to go where the Philistines are. And so he begins to climb a mountain. The Bible says that it was steep on both sides of them. And they begin to climb. And so uh, Jonathan says to his armor bearer, listen, are you with me? The armor bearer said, I'm with you. I will go with you. And it will be us two who will fight against all the Philistines. And if they see us down below and invite us up, we will know that God wants us to come upward and fight against them. And that's exactly what happened. They see, they invited them up. They, they grabbed hold of each rock until they made their way up the mountain. And when they got up there, they began to fight. And God gave them the victory. In the meantime, Saul had said, But a curse be anybody who eats. There's a fast. Well, guess what Jonathan found? Guess what Jonathan found? Guess what Jonathan found? He found some honey. And he said, I'm eating it. He didn't know anything about the fast. And he said to the other soldiers, Would you like something to eat? Uh, what can I, can I share with you? And no, 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 we can't eat. Your dad called fast. He said, oh, I'm eating the sweet honey I found. Let me tell you something. Not everybody is going to rejoice with you and all your victories, but eat your honey and enjoy it. Right? Not everybody's going to understand the things of God and what He's doing in your life, but eat your honey. 
But may I also say, Jonathan, be willing to share the honey. Amen. Here it is that, 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 that God provides this honey for Jonathan. And, 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 and though it was forbidden food from his father, he begins to eat it. He said, that's ridiculous. Look how this honey has refreshed me. Amen. We're to publish the works and the thanksgivings of God in our life. Can I tell you that when you find honey in life, amen, when God heals your body, and when God provides for you and when He visits with you and He sustains you, can I encourage you? Share the honey! Amen. Amen. Share it. Mm -hmm. See, instead of displaying your wounds, your scars, your fears, your struggles to survive, why don't you share the honey? Share the honey. <coughs> See, it's the positive outlooks. It's knowing that he that's begun the good work in you is going to finish it. It's knowing that there may be a struggle to overcome, but God gives us strength to overcome. You know what? This morning, can I just say this? Our struggles and our differences are very different. You see, someone, theirs might be that they eat some honey because they're needing to make, break a bad habit. Maybe someone needs to overcome evil with good. That's their honey. Maybe someone just has recovered from an illness or an injury that didn't look like a good prognosis. But that's your honey. Maybe God asked you to do something that you thought that you weren't capable of doing, but He came through and you did it. That's your honey. Maybe you've taught someone from the Word of God that you didn't think that you had the ability to teach the Bible the way that God allowed you to work and move. But that is your honey. Amen. Maybe it's a smile that even uh, in your difficulty, it brightens someone else's day. Amen. Even though it seems like you have a dark cloud over yours. Amen. It's because you refuse to retaliate to someone that's been evil against you. That is your honey. Uh, God knows what our honeys are this morning. But I'm asking, could we partake of the honey? And could we share the honey with one another? And could we share it with the world? Amen. Amen. It's time to get out of living in the funk. Amen. We may visit their time, a uh, 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 time or so. Amen. And maybe more than we care to visit. Amen. But we don't live there. We find honey, and then we share it with others. You see, our list could be endless of things that we go through. All of our carcasses that are strewn up throughout the path of our life. They're different carcasses. Nonetheless, I believe that each of them have honey for us. I think this morning it's important for us to do something. I love my boss at work. She's just an amazing cowboy and pastoral care. And every time I have a meeting, she starts out with something. She says, okay, okay, team, let's have our centering moment. And she gets something from the Word of God. And we sent her on it. I told you last week that she had sent me, uh, maybe I told you on Tuesday evening, this is how good God is. My, 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 my um, manager there, she, she, she's an African-American woman, and I know she has a history of singing. And I was told, I want to hear someone here say, why don't you just do a centering moment where you sing a song? And she's like, Come on, I haven't done that for a long time. I, my, my life has changed so much. I'm not really into singing. And so I had not been at church last Sunday morning. And didn't I get a text Monday morning? And she said, I felt like God wanted me to send this to you. And it was my boss. And before her message, she was preaching my Sunday morning. She was having what she was calling a center moment. And all she was doing was singing spontaneous for her. It was beautiful. It made my day. It gave me a little bit of Sunday morning church when I'm in Sunday morning church. But it was her centering moment. She said, I need sometimes to do that before I preach because I'm just between what's happened in the service and not completely with my message, so I need that centering moment. I believe that we need centering moments in our life. I believe that they're prayer. 
How many of you have ever been somewhere before and just got to pray? You know what you're doing? You're centering yourself. You're bringing yourself back into alignment with where you need to be. And in, in, in place with God. We live life so lopsided so often. You see, centering is just bringing ourselves into the focus. And, and so without living lopsided, it's good to be balanced. We need to realize that we are His children. Amen. And God is going to reign upon the just and the unjust. And as Job said, we need to accept the good from God as well as we need to accept the bad from God and know that in the middle of the bad, God is going to provide honey for us. So this morning, you want, you want to want the service to be, I want it to be about us just centering ourselves with God and saying, God, yes, this has been a challenge for me. And yes, this has been a struggle. And God, I, I feel like I have been in a funk. But you know what, God? I'm not living there. I'm coming out of that. I'm going to find honey. And I'm going to eat it in the right proportion that you can work and move in my life. Amen. And sometimes, you know, you may feel like you're on a guilt trip for savoring the honey. But I believe that we need to savor the honey. Some people think that serving God is nothing but hardship and deprivation. That is not what serving God is about. But savoring the honey. When's the last time that you savored the honey? There may be a carcass from 25 years ago there. But there's some honey in there. Have you savored it? Have you thought about God's healing? Have you thought about His provision? Have you thought about His comfort? Savor the honey. John, Jonathan didn't just stand there and eat all the honey, but he ate enough so that he could get enough energy to fight the next battle. So all that food that we eat and how that we should get the right amount of carbs in our diet, right? So that it spikes our blood sugars to give us the right amount of energy to do what we need to do. But we need to do that spiritually. Eat enough so that we can fight the next battle. Are you eating honey this morning? And then share your honey with others. You know what, Sister Rachel? If I share my honey with you and Brother Craig, it doesn't complete my enjoyment. I still enjoy it. I'll have plenty, Sister Tina. <coughs> and I'll share it with you, Brother John, because it, it helps me even heighten my enjoyment as we all enjoy it. Isn't it nice when we as a body enjoy the honey of God? That we share the goodness of God with one another, not being selfish, but it heightens our enjoyment because we can share it with others. Sister Holly, if you'd come to the piano this morning, and I think the last thing, and I've said it already, but I want to say it again. We don't have to be perfect to taste the honey of victory and joy. We look at Samson's life, and Samson's life, we look at him and we may say, man, it was just marred by a lot of bad decisions. But yet, if you look at Hebrews chapter number 11, you find that Samson went down in the hall of faith because of his moments of eating honey and what God has done for him. Listen this morning, you don't have to be the greatest spiritual giant that you think you may need to be. And I'm not, I'm not making an excuse for sin. Sin is wrong. That's not what I'm talking about here. But maybe you've struggled. Your struggle doesn't matter this morning. Amen. It matters that God gives you the victory and you eat the honey. Because we all have struggles. And we all visit the land of funk. But we're not because we tasted honey. Isn't honey amazing in itself? A couple years ago, I was having problems with allergies. And I'm not a big pill popper. Uh, I just I kind of just wait for my way through it. Then one day, Brother Dennis, one of the nurses that was at the hospital at, at uh, devotional time, began to talk to me. And she said, do you know what I started doing during allergy season? She said, I started taking a teaspoon of honey every day. 
raw honey that is from my area and have never struggled with allergy since. Guess what? It works. There's some medicinal purposes, some things that those bees put in that honey that help us. You know what? Who knows what God has in your honey this morning that will help you with the long-term effects of what you're going through in life. Once again, someone says, have you found any honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for you. This morning, can I invite you around the altars to do one thing? You probably never thought you'd do this in church, right? Could you come and eat some honey that's sufficient for you? Just come and eat the honey. Let's gather in this morning. Come gather.